views expressed in the videos are my observation, analysis of events, persons based on principles of astrology. It's not my intent to predict, forecast absolute outcomes, only suggest how they may unfold. Nothing is set in stone. I could be wrong, but often I'm right. My desire is not to promote fear, only inform about what we see unfolding. It is our wish to prepare our subscribers for events that could affect them, their family, their goals, and their future, to help to prepare for what you may already feel suspect is happening, and to send a warning shot across the bow and raise a flag of concern. Our goal is to help, not hinder, in these perilous times, to inspire and offer possible direction, and to reveal that a greater plan and purpose are behind all that is happening. Eventually, we will see a brighter day. If you would like to show your appreciation for our work on these videos or this channel, and also the Knowing Whispers channel, you can always click on the word thanks at the bottom of all the videos. Hello everybody, it's Robert Cosmar of the Astrology of Life YouTube channel and also the three Substack newsletters, Knowing Whispers, Messages from the Universe, Trump in America, and also Ask the Astrologer. Today the title of my video is Family Karma, Donald Trump and Mary Trump. And what I'm going to be doing here is looking at what I can of Mary Trump's horoscope and also incorporating that into the horoscope of Donald Trump to try to give you an understanding of the dynamics, okay, of what's going on there, of why Mary has been on a crusade for a number of years to expose Donald Trump, and I'll be able to show you in his chart where that dynamic plays out karmically, okay, in their relationship. I thought about this particular video for quite a long time, but I wanted to wait until Mary put out her latest book. And the reason for that is just simply respecting the person, respecting the person's privacy, and not divulging things about them that, uh, you know, might not be appropriate, okay, in regards to uh, the opinion of others. So I'm going to go through here, beginning with her natal chart, and then I'm going to, I think, show the chart of her planets in Donald Trump's chart. I have Mary Trump's date of birth and her location of birth. I don't have her time of birth. I had reached out to her about that, but um, I never got a response from that. I don't know whether she was just too busy because she is extremely busy or whether she is not somebody that has a lot of, uh, I guess, credible feelings about astrology. She has a PhD in psychology, so she's trained in psychology. And beyond that, I have no idea, okay? I think most of you know that uh, sometimes individuals are, you know, taboo. Astrology is taboo. Don't touch it. But, um, you know, maybe because of this video, she'll contact me or somebody will even give me her birth time if they know it so I can do a more accurate analysis. But from what I do know, and I haven't read her book, either one of her books, but from what I can tell from the horoscope, uh, she has had a very difficult life, and it's not a surprise to me that she chose to be a psychologist, because when you have as much uh, difficulty as what she has had in a particular family situation, uh, you probably very young begin to ask why, okay, or how do I deal with this? This doesn't feel right. This is too cruel, this type of thing. And that's pretty much the impression you get when you read her books, or even I think the book of her brother, um, when it talks about Donald Trump, the, the cruelty, uh, the fact that they basically were abandoned by the Trump family, meaning Donald and his wife and his kids, um, and that they were cheated out of money, out of uh, the money from Fred Trump, okay, uh, the father, Donald Trump's father, and... Um, that would have been Mary's father, okay, who uh, was an airline pilot and a very sensitive guy from what I could read. And uh, he was also an alcoholic. And um, 
the feeling is is that the relationship uh, with him and the father was probably quite a bit a result of that. Now, let's see what her natal chart can tell us. We don't have her birth time, so we're using 12 o'clock p.m. Okay, born in New York, May the 3rd, 1965. Okay, when you go over here to the Aspectarian, okay, you immediately begin to look at the squares here to the moon. And also this Neptune opposing the sun. Neptune opposing the sun in a horoscope depending upon whether or not the mother or the father is the son individual, because it can change, usually indicates individuals who are alcoholics. There could be some mental illness. There could be some drug addiction. Okay, they are not in touch with reality. All right, is essentially the, uh, the diagnosis of, I guess you would call it that, of an astrology reading for someone with Neptune squaring, conjuncting maybe, and also uh, in the opposition. Now, I have to be careful here with the moon because we don't know the time of birth and the moon can move around five degrees either or one way or the other. This could throw off some of these aspects here. The saving grace of this particular uh, moon in her chart has to do with the closeness of Jupiter and the moon. This creates a very warm-hearted connection with an individual. A very pleasant likableness, okay? Um, something that is not damaged severely, okay? So much by other aspects here. Now, the aspects here in her chart that you see going on here of Saturn squaring the moon, if in fact it is, Uranus squaring the moon, Pluto squaring the moon, this can create problems for that Jupiter conjuncting the moon. Whatever was pleasant, likable, and that worked, uh, whatever nurturing she may have gotten from her mother, if this is the case, uh, these other planetary aspects create problems. There was something uh, difficult, unusual about the mother's behavior. Okay, I don't know enough about her uh, to comment on what others knew about her. But the fact that the moon and Jupiter may have been relatively close to one another it was like i said a saving grace there she could make a connection okay or she could reach out there i know that her mother i believe began to have some problems after i think her father and her mother and, and her mother meaning mary trump's mother were divorced uh, but i have no real information about how uh, she dealt with that other than the fact that she had some difficulties so in essence, Mary grew up in a dysfunctional type of environment, and it was compounded by the fact that the outside family um, was very cruel, very distant, uh, very narcissistic in their own way. Prideful, I guess, might even be a better word. And from what they said about Mary's father, he was a very sensitive guy, okay? And he wasn't like Fred Sr., who was kind of the um, you know, do whatever it takes to win, regardless of whether it's right or wrong, which kind of passed on to Donald. Fred Trump, Mary's father, was supposed to be the next Fred Trump, like his father. He chose to become an airline pilot, and as a result of that, he was kind of cut off from that relationship with the father. Okay, so that's kind of the background here as to what is going on in Mary's horoscope. Um, and why it is that she has really been, I think, healing herself by bearing her soul, okay, to the public and her writing. And I'm sure that as a trained psychologist, she understands how good that is to be able to get in touch with your feelings when you have been suppressing them, holding them within, you know. Um, she was definitely very traumatized as a child because of the family saga that was going on, okay? All right, let's go here to another image. All right, now, this one is going to be the comparison between Donald Trump's chart and Mary's chart. Donald, of course, is inside here. Mary's is outside here, okay? The thing that you notice right away about this particular chart, okay, is that Mary has a conjunction here, okay, of Mars and of Uranus and of Pluto. 
Okay, Uranus and Pluto essentially represent revolution. Mars, okay, creates a rebellious spirit. This is the kind of a, a individual who really could not compel herself not to be an activist of some kind, and she's kind of functioned as that. She's been essentially talking about, from her level of knowledge, the family secrets and helping to give uh, a clearer picture of why Donald Trump was the way that he was and why he is the way that he is now and why it is that he is so consumed with power and uh, doing the things that he's doing. Now, this placement here in Donald Trump's first house essentially says that this particular individual, Mary Trump, Mars, Uranus, and Pluto, okay, filled with aggressive dynamic energy is going to, uh, I guess the word I would use to a certain degree, is to attack Donald Trump. This is somebody who feelings about Donald Trump are very aggressive, okay, that feels the need to speak out, all right, to tell the world the damage that he's done, okay? Now, when it comes down to the effect of Mary Trump's childhood and her karma. You can see over here that Saturn is opposing essentially Pluto, Uranus, and also Mars. Okay? It's in Donald Trump's seventh house, the house of his relationship with others. All right? She is the proverbial thorn in his flesh. She has been doing... Um, this for quite some time. When you talk about Saturn and Mars, or no, I'm sorry, Saturn and Pluto in any combination of any chart, I think I did a video about oh, two weeks ago where I talked about the fact that in the vast majority of wars, whether they were World War or they were, you know, individual small wars, country, country type things, that you'll find Pluto and Saturn involved because it represents restructuring. Saturn represents the old, okay, belief systems, for example. Pluto is events that happen that cause us deep pain, kind of the dark night of the soul type pain. But if you're strong enough to make it through, it also helps to give you a rebirth consciously and understanding, okay? So <clears throat> this combination here, uh, again, Pluto opposing Saturn here, Uranus opposing Saturn, Mars opposing Saturn, okay? This has been a great test of her fears, okay? It took a lot of courage for her to decide to do what she's doing to her uncle for a lot of reasons, okay? But most importantly for her was the need in this lifetime to confront, okay, these demons, so to speak, represented by um, Donald Trump and his family to assert herself, okay, to make a stand for her family, for what Donald Trump and his family did to his father in part and also his mother, okay. So this again uh, is from a karmic standpoint, you know, uh, again, it's so difficult to talk about karma because I doubt whether the majority of people that are interested in astrology will accept karma, okay? I can't say that I honestly did for a number of years, but when I began to study Vedic astrology and compare the results that I was saying, and I began to evolve consciously, and I began to understand oneness and wholeness and inner healing and stuff, I began to realize that nothing happens by chance and that there is a positive reason why Mary Trump was born into that family and why she's doing what she's doing, okay? It's not just somebody who has a grudge uh, going after somebody else in the family. It's much more profound than that. It's much more karmic than that. It's designed that way, okay? Uh, so, a lot of intensity. Now, if there is one thing that Mary has probably encountered and that she will encounter in regards to Donald Trump, her Saturn and her Pluto both aspect Donald Trump's Uranus. Uranus is Donald Trump's bizarre quirkiness, 
his good fortune in some ways. You remember that in Donald Trump's natal chart, there's a very close trine between Jupiter and Uranus. All right. This in some ways is why he's able to get away with some of the things he does. Okay. And I think in the relationship between Mary and Donald, the thing that she may have already come to grips with is the fact that Donald is very crafty, okay, as well as being very dark, all right? He is a formidable opponent, obviously, for anybody that goes up against him, even though his circumstances and his karma are beginning to catch up with him, okay? So she probably has begun the process of doing what she can to protect herself within, to be prepared for situations that are not thinkable, uh, things that Donald may try to do both before and after the election. I'm sure she already understands that if he won the election, if he wins the election, that she is in much dire straits then than she is now because he will go after his enemies. He will go after her in some way, shape, or form. Okay. He's kind of put her on the back burner for right now, but he doesn't forget. Okay. And this is why we can hope that uh, uh, when Donald Trump is defeated in November, that uh, that part of the problem will go away, hopefully. Okay, so this is the dynamic between Mary Trump and Donald Trump, her impact upon him, the areas of his life that she is impacting, okay, his credibility, his identity, okay, his physical person, and then his relationship with others, okay, uh, providing a very strong platform uh, for revealing the person Donald Trump, okay, to the world. Okay, let's go forward here a little bit to Election Day. Now, if I were doing Mary Trump's horoscope, and I were basically looking at the timeline between now and the election, I would caution her not to be overly excited about things at the election. All right. This election is going to be very troublesome. Okay. Uh, it's probably going to be challenged. It may go to the Supreme Court. It's going to be worrisome. Okay. And again, the worrisome part of that may, it may be not that it shows, uh, you know, through the tallying up that Kamala Harris has won and won convincingly, but the MAGA machine in place, what it's going to do to try to discount and to prevent this election from getting finalized. Okay, much like Trump tried to do the last time. Throw on top of that, we know that transiting Mars is opposing Pluto on Election Day. So, it will be a very tense Election Day around that area there. Okay, I would expect in any way, shape, or form that Donald Trump will try to mobilize whatever he can to assault, disrupt, the government of the United States and the Biden administration, much like he tried to do on January the 6th, and it failed. This is his main goal because he knows that pretty much that's just about the last resort for him. Okay, so what I'm referring to here at Mary's chart, when you're looking over here, these are the transits on Election Day, November the 5th. Saturn is sextiling the sun. That's good. Saturn is opposing or squaring the moon much of what she has in her natal chart, all right? Uh, this oftentimes manifests as a depressed influence, okay? Or emotions that are held in check. Saturn opposing Mars can be a combination of events, okay? That create fear and anxiety and worry, okay? A difficulty to uh, express one's feelings without being, um, somewhat depressed, I guess, in one way. And then Saturn opposing Uranus here, as well as Saturn opposing Pluto and her horoscope. All right. This Saturn is also almost exact her Saturn return. She's coming into her second Saturn return. All right. 
Saturn returns are notable in the fact that you basically evaluate your life, what it has been up till now, and you realize that you have to make some changes, that there's something that you haven't quite solved yet, that there is um, maybe anxieties, unconscious blocks, inner pain, that you have maybe only on one level been able to comprehend and deal with, but you haven't been able to maybe on a heart-soul level to release from the fear and the anxiety, okay, that um, those issues um, brought with you when you came into this life. So again, all of this Saturn opposition going on here, very heavily opposition, all right, is going to be a challenge for her not to be overcome by it. And again, my feeling about this is, is that this is just simply because the election is not finalized on November the 5th. That there are several things going on that are standing in the way of the elections being tallied, or there is massive um, demonstrations, massive uh, attempts on a state level, okay, uh, to disrupt the election counts. Um, it could be it could be monumental, or it might just be something that delays the tattling of things for maybe you know a few weeks or even a couple of months. So there is tremendous pressure that she still has to encounter uh, before before all of this is said and done. All right. Now this is just simply what I showed you on the last graph, but I'm bringing it into context of the. The timeline here. Saturn opposing Pluto, it first happened in April, okay, October the 9th. All right, it comes into play again. This no doubt will have something to do with what Donald Trump has done or is doing, okay. On the 30th of September, Saturn is, is semi squaring the midheaven, okay. We can't use that in her chart because we don't know her birth time. Here is Saturn conjuncting Saturn on September the 24th. All right. She really is uh, one of those individuals that has come to a peak in her life. Okay. And she is carrying this massive crusade on. And it could lead to bigger and better things, or it could lead to a uh, realization that she has to change some of her thinking, some of the way she's been doing things, you know, even up till now. Um, all of these things play a part in what's going to be occurring at that time. Now, this next chart is the chart of Donald Trump. And of course, there's several things that are going on here. Now, Donald Trump has already supposedly had two assassination attempts. Okay. There is, I believe, one more time. Okay. Where Uranus and Agal conjunct one another. I'm not sure from looking at the chart right here whether it has gone beyond its last squaring to Mars. Um, it may have because I don't see it on here. Okay. Uh, that could indicate, oh, I know what it is. It doesn't come back to that again until I think January or February. That, in my opinion, may be the last and final attempt upon Donald Trump's life. Okay. But again, this is Uranus conjuncting his midheaven. Okay. And uh, we will no doubt, okay, see uh, some changes. And uh, whether they are of a positive nature for him or a negative nature, it's hard to tell because you're talking about Uranus. But you can see here this conjunction happens in December. Okay. And that there aren't really many aspects going on here prior to the election, which is kind of interesting. You can see that going into 2025, he's got to deal with, with Saturn, probably legal issues. Okay. Um, and that, like I said, this aspect here of Uranus conjuncting the midheaven. Of course, Jupiter is also conjuncting Uranus. All right. You know... <clears throat> If I based my feelings about what's going on emotionally, uh, after a while, it would burn me out. And I think that a lot of you 
to watch these videos. Hopefully you gathered what I'm trying to say about the importance of meditation and the importance of your inner life. Because the emotional pull of what is going on okay, is extremely stressful. Okay, Very stressful. And without, quite honestly, without meditation, without some form of inner work, it would be very difficult all right, not to be affected by that. Okay, because again, as I mentioned several times already, we're talking about karma. We're talking about things that are fated to be, things that are destined to be, and that um, these things need to happen because the overall purpose of Donald Trump and what is going on is that mankind is being given the opportunity to evolve beyond all of this nonsense, if we choose to. If not, then we probably are looking um, for a good slap in the face by the universe in some form. And hopefully that's not Donald Trump getting back in the White House. Okay? So, Donald's got a lot of stuff going on as well. All right, now, this chart here is kind of a simplistic way of talking about all the stuff I've just talked about. These here are transits and progressions, okay, in the chart of Mary Trump, okay? And what you're looking at here is a period between September the 22nd to October 14th, 2025. It's about a year or two years. And if you'll notice over here, these colored lines, green is business success, red is good luck optimism, Blue is emotional sensitivity, and then the tan is solitude withdrawal. And what you can gather from this chart is that in both business success and good luck, that that line is growing. And I know that Mary has been on, I think, MSNBC, and she gets a lot of uh, time on other news networks as well, uh, and that she is uh, an author, you know, in the process of trying to market and sell her new book. Um, so this is good. This tells me that this part of her life is going to continue to grow. All right. Um, it could be here that in, I guess it's August 2025. All right. There could be something that occurs that brings down that feeling of being good luck and optimistic. Now, this doesn't have to mean that Donald Trump's in the White House. It could be something else entirely. I apologize for the lawnmower. I never know when they're going to do this, and they happen to do it today. But the good thing here is simply this, okay, is that you can see here solitude withdrawal. Um, after the election, Mary is probably going to want to get some peace of mind and quiet because she's going to be exhausted. She is so involved in so many things that uh, I couldn't do it, okay? The fact here that emotional sensitivity is important, too, because this indicates that basically after the election, her emotional sensitivity to what is going on is going to be reduced, all right? Another potential indication that Donald Trump may, in fact, have lost and she doesn't have to worry about the ramifications of dealing with him from the White House. So, all in all, looking at from now until the next year, uh, it would appear that Mary is going to find a way to deal with her emotions. She's going to take some time uh, maybe to get away from the madness, but yet she's going to continue possibly to write. Maybe she'll get an opportunity to do some other things. Uh, she is a PhD in psychology. She's highly educated. Okay, who knows? Who knows? Okay, but as I mentioned earlier, her Saturn return, her second Saturn return is a big deal because you begin to look at your life, what you've done, everything you've done up until now, and you ask yourself the question, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Okay, uh, it's one of those soul searching type things that you have to ask yourself. Okay, because you have run out of the belief that you had up until that point about what your life was all about. All right, now, let's take a look at Donald Trump here. They don't have solitude. It, if I had, it probably go clear off the, the chart here. But you can see here with Donald Trump, September the 14th, 
this is 12 13 2024 and again these graphics represent the aspects positive and negative aspects to the planets and transits and also progression so they're giving me a graphical representation of is the energy very positive and strong or is it declining okay so when you see things down here and this is before november the 13th okay donald trump's attitude about his business success and his good luck op optimism is not very high but something happens here so what could this be all right my feeling is this spike is probably an attempt or a plan executed Maybe it involves the Supreme Court of Donald Trump to challenge the election, okay, through legal or unlegal means, okay? The other telltale thing going on here is the blue line, emotional sensitivity. You can see here that it's pretty equal, okay? By the way, the higher they go up this line, the stronger is going to be the interaction, the reaction, okay? That's why you have this over here. This is intensity. Okay, you can see that his emotional intensity, okay, is pretty equal until we get around election, and then it takes a big hump. Okay, and then it begins to calm down as you go after the first of the year. All right, but right here we have this spike, and again, the only reason probably for him to be optimistic is because he believes or feels that he's done something that's going to give him the presidency, which quite honestly is not likely. All right. But anything can happen. Okay. All right. We're now back to her natal horoscope. And I think basically I cover as much as I really could. Uh, I do sincerely wish that I could get her birth time so that I could do a, a much more precise analysis, or, you know, taking a look at um, the different factors in her life, uh, difficult childhood. And like I said, I held up doing this because I wanted to wait for her to get her book out. Her book covers a lot of this. You know, and again, I respect her. I respect what she's doing. Uh, I feel like I wanted to protect her privacy, okay, until she put that out there. And then, then I could talk astrologically, karmically about what it is that's going on in her life, okay. And again, uh, this particular conjunction down here, this is the conjunction of somebody who is, you know, an activist, okay. And uh, you don't see this right here because this is her natal chart. We don't have an accurate birth time. But when I go over here to the chart of Donald Trump, you see it falls into the first house, which is his, the mask, his physical body, you know, how he represents himself. Okay, a very personal house, you know, that she has felt the need to attack, to assault that. And she's doing that very effectively. Okay, as well as causing problems for her, him with other people. But you cannot, you cannot fall asleep on Donald Trump, okay? He is playing a karmic role, okay? This is something that is very difficult to convince people of because we're so emotionally torn up about this election that even when you see Donald Trump say and do things, emotionally, you have a hard time not hating the man, okay? But on a much higher level, this whole process of Donald Trump and what we're seeing happening is causing many individuals to evolve, many to question their long, you know, held beliefs from childhood about the meaning of life, of what is valuable, okay, does wealth bring you happiness, that type of thing. I think we're seeing in Donald Trump that that's not the real purpose of life, but, uh, you know, we're all kind of hard-headed and, uh, Sometimes it takes painful situations to come to that reality. Okay, I hope that you enjoy the video. I hope that you share it on the internet. Um, I'm going to put on a graphic on this particular one here that also promotes Mary's new book. And um, I hope that you will get a chance to read that if you want to have a closer view into uh, the life that she has lived, what she's going through, what she has gone through. Um, she's very honest, very open. Okay, about the pain that the Trump family has caused her. 
And um, I would imagine also she's probably put in there different techniques or different ways that she's learned to cope and deal with these things, of which writing is probably one of the most important for her. Okay, don't forget to vote. The election is coming up. All right, and it will be tricky. All right, for those of you that are subscribers, those of you that are members of the channel, those of you that make donations, either spontaneously or on a monthly basis, thank you so much for your support. It does mean a lot to CJ and I. Um, we are thankful for your interaction, particularly in the community section and your response to the videos. Um, it is significant for us to get that feedback. So keep that in mind. And uh, going into the month of October, as I have mentioned all along, I will be doing a live stream every Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. And I don't think that we go standard time again until November, so that won't mess me up. But I'll be doing it every Saturday from 10 to 11, talking about the current development, what MAGA and Trump are doing, what Kamala Harris may be doing, okay, and what's happening. And then uh, hopefully as well, we'll have that time to talk about the principle of awakening that's going on, that's being caused by all this, because it by far is more important, really. Okay. All right. From the love of my life, CJ, my spiritual partner, my best friend, love of my life, and Riri, our little 10-pound fur animal, we thank you so much for your devotion to the work we're doing, and we hope that we keep providing information for you that is helpful to you as well. Have a great week.